Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. It is a pretty cold, blustery and overcast day, but I couldn't be happier because I am sat alongside the River Tay. I'm in Scotland and I'm on my final day on the Rob Roy Way. So this afternoon I should have finished the trail. I've been walking for a few days already. Really, really enjoying it. It's a beautiful trail. Can't wait to share that with you in the Rob Roy Way video. Anyway, today I'm not here to talk so much about the Rob Roy Way, although I will be using it as my example. I want to talk about an app, specifically the Hiker app. So that's Hiker with two eyes. <laughs> so this app was developed in July of this year, so it's still quite new. It's mid-September right now, but I've been using it on the different trails that I've been on this year. So far I've done six trails this year, uh, and for me it's been pretty game-changing. Now when it comes to navigation, I'm pretty old school. I like to stick with a map, a compass and signs <laughs> as much as possible to rely on my brain and to rely on my knowledge. So I'm practicing, uh, but I do wish I had this app last year because when I was on the trail last year, lots of different trails. Again, I had a few hiccups, navigational errors, found myself quite panicked, quite stressed. Um, I eventually managed to get myself out of those situations, which was great for building my confidence. But to have this in my pocket to locate myself and to sort myself out would have been pretty game changing and when it would have meant I was on my way sooner than I was. <laughs> so what I want to do is delve into this app, run through the different features on it and help you decide whether you feel like this is something you'd like to have on your phone, in your pocket for when you're out and about on the trail. So let's get it loaded up and we'll delve into it. Okay, so I'm on my home page. I scroll across and you can see my hiker app here. So it's the two little mountains and it's hiker with two eyes. So if I select that, it will load up. Ta-da! So this is the home page. So whether you have the free app or whether you buy the sort of offline version and we'll have a chat about that in a minute, this is what you'll get. So you can see all the sorts of different trails. You can scroll along. You've got popular trails here. Look at that, Kungsleden, West Highland Way, coast to coast, all sorts of different trails. And we'll get into the variety of trails in a minute. Um, recently viewed, uh, that was me nosing at the Thames Path this morning, West Highland Way, Bear Way, I've just come from there. Kungsleden, that is on my list um, and so on. You can see they've got the Camino broken down into different stages there, which is great. Ireland, they've got all sorts of different Irish trails here. Uh, lovely. Southwest Coastal Path, obviously longest trail here in the United Kingdom, 630 miles. So rather than just having one massive page, again, they've broken that down into stages because most people tend to walk the Southwest Coastal Path in different legs, which I think is great that they've done that. Scotland, I can tick off the West Island Way. I can tick off the Great Glen Way. Isle of Skye is on the list. Rob Roy Way, can tick that off pretty soon. Uh, all sorts of different trails there. Alpine Adventure, can tick off the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, you can see there's just so many here, beautiful, beautiful pictures. And then they have staff pics and this changes, I think, weekly, uh, which is quite nice, actually. But let's actually really delve into the number of different trails that they've got. So if I click map there in the center of the top, select. So <laughs> look at this crazy map. The orange blobs are basically trails that they have on here and they're constantly adding new trails, which is great. As I said, this has only been released in July and I am excited to be reviewing it so soon because they're constantly adding stuff to it and it can only get better, let's be honest. So if I zoom in on the United Kingdom, somewhere underneath that mass, you can see all these different trails that they have documented. So where am I? I'm up here. Uh, lucky guess, Rob Roy Way. Let's try this one. Hey, I know my map well enough. Here we go. So you can see the Rob Roy Way here. I expect this will be the West Highland Way, this one here. Yep, there we go. So you can see that basically it shows the length of the trail and we'll, we'll delve into each one in a minute. Uh, so we see that's the United Kingdom. Bear Away that I've just come from, for example. Let's try that. There you go, Bear Away. And then if I click to that one. Oh, that's a long trail. Oh yeah, I remember walking past that. That's a very long trail. <laughs> and you can see when you select a trail, Obviously it gives you the title, it gives you the rough location, you've got the little arrow there on the left so you can go to the trail. Um, you've got the ascent, the amount of ascent um, on the trail there in the bottom, you've got the different stages that they break it down into and you've got the total mileage there. So it's a nice sort of overview um, of all sorts of different trails. Let's pick another one for fun. Where am I? I live sort of down here. This is going to be Southwest Coastal Path I expect. Here we go, look, Charmouth to Abbotsbury, almost on my home patch. So if you selected that then you can break down the southwest coast of Puffs. So it's really great. So you can look at your rough location and you can be like, what's my nearest uh, long distance trail? Or if you have a trail that you're particularly keen to do, then you can obviously look it up on here and, and hopefully it's on here. So for simplicity's sake, because I'm on it, let's have a look at the Rob Roy Way. 
select and if I go to that one here we go so you can see this is what each of the home pages looks like for a trail so you have a summary picture which is always very beautiful and stunning and makes you want to walk uh, you have obviously the title you've got the little heart in the corner and we'll have a look at that in a minute you've got again the summary of the walk there so this one's um, almost ten and a half thousand feet of ascent seven different stages they've broken it down into and it's 80 miles in total uh, you've got trail map overview you've got trail stages you've got download offline maps you've got traditional so if i selected that there you go now you can do it in reverse so it depends which direction you want to do the trail in uh, trail stats really nice to have that there if you're just interested in some information maybe you're making a video or you just want to tell your mates this is what i'm doing you can see it here then they've got photos again always very stunning look at that man <laughs> amazing 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 so what i have found is some of the photos aren't always taken exactly on the trail the sort of key sites around the area but they are always amazing um, and it's quite nice to try and find the places that take photos of then they've got some climate information so if i selected spring it tells you the sort or in fact no let's select autumn because that's where i am now uh, average temperature is 10.3 degrees celsius no wonder it feels cold today <laughs> maximum temperature is around 15 degrees precipitation quite a lot uh just interesting stats there to have obviously not necessarily going to dictate your weather but it's quite nice to have that on there and then you can add reviews once you have an account um so paul here you go paul <laughs> paul's written brilliant trail less used in the west highland way but has its own unique beauty that's absolutely true and then you can like things you can see i've liked that so i can unlike it and like it again so you've got kind of community on here you can rate it did you complete the full trail yes how was it five star any comments beautiful that's what i'm gonna put really recommend save and I, I can add some pictures as well if i wanted to uh, oh i need to add a profile picture i'll do that in a bit uh so that's kind of the main home page for each trail so let's come back to this heart so i can heart trails so i can favorite them basically so if i select that and if i go right back to the home page so you can see i've got my profile here on the bottom of the screen you've got search favorite profile so if i click favorite now the robbery way is there for me so it means when i'm on the trail i can really quickly access that so let's go back to it and there we go we're back on that page if i unfavorited that you should be able to see oh, okay at the moment it's staying on the favorite page but that's probably because my internet is quite weak but in theory it would not be on the favorites page <laughs> so favorited that and then we're back on the home page so let's get down to it so if you are wanting to well say you're just on the trail and you're wanting to sort of keep an eye on where you are so if you click on the trail map overview this is what it looks like so ta-da that's the length of the trail um so how am i going to work this i want to make sure i show you all the different features because so there's, there's a lot going on on this page even though it looks quite simple so let's start in the left hand corner first of all so you can see the compass symbol there if i put my location on here we go and if i select that there you go it tells me where i am so you can see that's where i'm sat right now perched alongside the river tay oh i've moved where am i oh okay hang on <laughs> uh here we go it's just made it a little bit more accurate so i'm perched here along the shores of the river tay you can see the footpath the black line there is the trail so i've just come off trail slightly um and it's really rather beautiful here if i double select that you get a compass um here so you can show your direction if i rotate myself I'm now looking up the river, you can see. And then if I turn this way, obviously it comes with me on the phone, and I'm now facing down the river, which is quite a nice feature. So you can sort of locate yourself and orientate yourself using this compass. Uh, basically, it's obviously like a traditional compass. So let's turn that off. I'm gonna turn my location off now as well, just to save my battery. So the other thing you can get is if you click the button above the compass, select that, you can see the different map styles. So the ones that have a tick here are maps that I have downloaded for offline use. So you can only download these if you actually buy the app feature. Um, so just to show you how to download them, if I come back to this, so you remember that gray tab, download offline maps. If I select that, then I can download them. So rather than delete, it would say download maps or something like that, offline use. Uh, definitely best to do that on Wi-Fi. Um, that is how you download the maps so coming back to my trail overview so what i have been doing actually is because it defaults to the waymarked trails map 
I don't find it hugely full of detail as you can see there's not a lot going on so I tend to select the OSM outdoors and there you go there's a little bit more going on you can see different tracks and paths so say I was here um, at Akinburn so I walked through there yesterday so say I didn't want to go up past the waterfalls instead I wanted to stay on the road and join the path a little bit later I can now see the other roads and I could work my way up and somehow forge my way back to the trail there we go happy days it's interesting sort of working it all out looking at the contours looking at the you know the steepness the gradient of the landscape you can see this is a lot more undulating it's got the names of the different crags there um, so let's break this down again so here we go Aberfeldy that's where I've left today so now we're coming to the right hand side of the screen um, so you can select the plus button so there's three different tabs so we're going to start with basic so this is where you can add or take away different things to do with the trail specifically the actual route so the state hang on let me zoom out so I can show you this a little bit better so the red flags right now are the stages so if I select this and I get rid of stages, there you go, you can now see there are no stages on there. Let's put them back. Alternative trails, if I get rid of that, you can see that grey arrow that was near there disappeared. So if I put it back and show you, so I actually didn't take this route. Oh, no, not that one. Yeah. There we go, this one. So this is the extra loop on the Rob Roy Way that makes it to about 94 miles. So I was going to take that, but I'm struggling with knee injuries at the moment. So I've actually just followed the black line. Um, but they, they pretty much always have the alternative routes on here. So again, you can keep an eye on where you are on the trail, which is really nice. Shows you the total distance again at the bottom. It's 30 miles. Huh, apparently you can do it in 11 and a half hours. <laughs> and of course it shows you your ascent there as well. And then distance. If I enabled my location again right now, it would tell me roughly how far it is from where I am. Distance from the start. Mm, I'm not sure that's entirely true. 89 miles. Oh no, it, it, that is true because it's the longer trail. Um, oh, I've lost it. Yeah, come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> Okay, well, you saw roughly what that meant. And now, for example, I've just selected a main leg. And again, it tells you um, the distance, the length from the trail and, and stuff like that. So that's the, the, the get rid of that. Yeah, there we go. The different stages and, and alternative routes. Uh, you can get rid of the trail as well. So say you didn't really want the trail. You just wanted to look at different stages. Um, you can do that. And let's put the trail. Actually, I did that a couple of times on the bear away because I found that... Um, I couldn't see because the black line was so thick as sometimes for example look at this little road sometimes it would be over the road and you couldn't quite see whether you are supposed to be looking for a road or a track so I would just magic button get rid of the trail and then I can see okay I'm on a road and then a track which is quite helpful uh, then you've got all sorts of different things there so spur trails alternative trails lots of different things worth playing around with um, I certainly haven't used that to um, or fully used that feature all of the features on the basic just because i haven't really needed to yet so let's come to accommodation so this is in oh my gosh it's incredible so say okay hello abby i want to walk the rob row way i'm like right get yourself the hiker app because you can plan your trail through the hiker app pretty much so if we go on accommodation say you want to camp the trail you want to stay on campground as much as possible so you select that and look at that amazing they've basically highlighted all the different campsites along the route including some good wild camping spots so we're in Drimmen this is where I stayed on the first night I stayed at Drimmen camping I walked the first day of the West Hallam Way in order to get to Drimmen let me just rotate that for you there you go so you've got that there details they link to the website so if you've got internet you can go across to the internet so you've got phone numbers everything's on there if I want to favorite that because I stayed there so I'm, I'm adding up my stages so I stayed at Drimmen camping there we go. Where did I go next? Let's scroll up the trail. Uh, so I stayed near Kelty Bridge. This isn't actually where I stayed. Um, I did stay at a Kelty Bridge a camping site, but for some reason that's not on here, but that's okay. So I'm going to favourite that as well. So you see what I'm doing? I'm basically making my route. Um, where did I stay? I wild camped along the shores. Oh no, I didn't. That's a lie. I came up. Where did I go? I'm lost. Um... Oh, I well camped along there, though. So something like that, anyway. So I basically, I'm selecting different accommodations. So now if I get rid of that and I go on to, where is favourites? Ah, there. <laughs> I go on to favourites. What it will do, here we go, is it will just show me the places that I favourite. So Drimmen Camping, there's my other campsite. Say I had another campsite 
here then it would be favorited in killing and so on which is really really great so you can sort of plan your route like that so that's camping um, let's get rid of my favorites a minute so now accommodation you've got hotels all sorts of different hotels along the trail which is they're amazing not all of them are even on the route which is cool so if you wanted to divert off routes to say Aberfeldy say all of the hotels within Aberfeldy were full then you're like okay there's one over here let's try this one or let's try this one which is is so so helpful um, or if you're doing day walks and you want to do a loop I, I just love that feature I think it's amazing uh, also got B&Bs so you can see the B&B &B symbol there it's a, a coffee mug and a person in bed which is quite cool I think actually uh, so that's your B&Bs. Well, so we got shelters. This is quite good. So there's not a huge amount of shelters on this route. Yeah, there we go. So these are basically like bodies or animal centre. Oh, apparently you can stay there. <laughs> I'm going to go stay with all the animals. Um, I'm pretty sure there's another one further up on the trail. Um, I might be completely wrong. I think. Yeah, there we go. So here we go. This will be a body right in the middle of nowhere green body there you go so if you wanted to hike up to crag hill and then down to green body that's how you would do that which i think is is really cool oh that's actually a track from the looks of it <laughs> uh so that's your shelters uh hostels this is cool actually uh because say you're camping all the way and it's just dire weather and you just want somewhere dry to stay then you can find a hostel so we go we've got aberfeldy hostel there so if i wanted to go there website again you can look at how far away it is from you um so that's really helpful to have that feature and then we've other what's other hmm. oh i guess other could be um potentially wild camping yeah there you go look wild camping sites so if they found a good place that's good for wild camping here you go you could probably go down that track and camp on the shores of loch tay and that's pretty much what i did somewhere around there a little bit further this way i think it was uh, so there we go. That is the accommodation feature. So you can pretty much plan your entire trail using this. It just shows you all of the accommodations, uh, most of the accommodations. Let me put it like that, which I absolutely love. So you sorted out where you want to go now. Um, what about things en route? So say you want to know where viewpoints are. So we select viewpoints. Here we go. So these are some good viewpoints. You've got the binoculars here. So that just basically shows you different crags. Um, and places you can go to there we go that was a good viewpoint there you go falls of akin that was fun amazing falls there really beautiful there was a little hermit cave as well really enjoyed that up there actually um Aberfeldy. where was that oh that's probably the other falls yeah there you go falls of mornays that was beautiful as well really enjoyed that so i love that feature because it sort of shows you okay where you know where am i going to get some good views or interesting things to see today history now this is good this they've just added this um i really requested them to do it and i'm, I'm glad they have so if i select this little monument feature here we go two iron mort safes oh, i remember that so there was a little church there and it had two iron coffins outside and basically it was supposed to stop um body snatchers <laughs> it's supposed to deter them it's kind of a bit gruesome really but it was a very interesting site and um, what they're hoping to do is add a little bit more information because at the moment there isn't anything but it still you know opens up the the potential for you to do your own research into what's going on on the trail you can be like oh, okay i'm interested in that just do a quick google uh, memorial site uh, roman camp like there's all sorts of stuff on here hill fort oh my gosh this is amazing <laughs> i love it so you can just do a little google and find out more information um, other stuff if you're looking for shops because you need some food then you can just click that and of course they're probably mostly going to be in the towns so we've got tesco's express i actually went there oh no i didn't it was closed i went to co-op um anyway brands i'm not sponsored by either <laughs> uh what else have we got we've got bus stops water pharmacy restaurant like everything you can just put it all on there and go crazy it's amazing just really encourage you to explore with all these buttons so the water is amazing again it's just the different um becks and stuff that you know the rivers that might be coming down that you can just get some water from i probably encourage you to well i would encourage you to purify it if you can um although you know somewhere if there's like water like here <laughs> then you probably would be okay uh so that's the sort of amenities feature which is amazing so again you can look at your bus routes you can look at what else have we got towns transport pubs if you want pubs um do bear in mind things change like pub you know okay let's try a pub for example 
Um, you know, their opening and closing times are going to vary throughout the week and throughout the seasons as well. So that's where it's probably helpful to go onto their website and then you can look at their opening and closing times and just make sure that you're going to be there when they're actually open uh, and you need to, to access their facilities. So that's your basic, your accommodation, your amenities. I just think it's, it's so diverse. It's fantastic to be able to access all that information at the click of a button. Uh, you can see now at the bottom of the screen here, what we've got is an elevation chart. So that's basically the elevation of the trail. So actually, if I put my location back on, I'm interested to find out. So you can see my little blue, the little blue dot on the elevation there, that's where I am right now. So you can see if I walk, it's probably going to take me to Grand Dully, which is there. Uh, and then I probably have to go, yeah, look, look at the contours. So I have to go up. So I expect if I located myself there, then I would at some point find myself on the top of this little peak and then I'll be dropping right down into pit lockery so you can see there's the high point 407 don't go quite up to it uh, but then I start to drop down the other side and that matches the contours um, or the elevation chart there sorry which is which is fantastic and it also shows me how far I've walked so I've walked 72 miles on the total distance there which is is brilliant um it's quite good actually it doesn't feel like I've walked 72 miles <laughs> uh, so I'll see obviously when I get to pit lockery I'll be able to see the the, the grand total of mileage that I've done, which is super. Let's turn my location back off. So that's pretty much everything, I think, off the top of my head that you can do on the trail. Of course, if you have internet, you can explore other maps as well. So if I wanted to go to satellite, so say I really wanted to find out somewhere about wild camping, you know, I could zoom in a little bit more and be like, mm, okay, there's a beach there. I want to stay on that beach. And then you can try and find your way down. So that's quite helpful. Oh, wrong button. Um, You've got the open cycle maps. So actually a lot of this route has been cycle cycle routes. Um, we've been on the National Cycle Network number seven. And you can see, here we go, look, it says number seven. Hang on, see, this is where, for example, the trail is getting in the way of that number. So if I get rid of that, now I can see number seven, which is great. Um, am I near any right now? Yeah, I'm kind of quite close to... Okay, so the cycle route number seven is on the other side of the river and the footpath is obviously on this side that we're on right now, which is cool. So that's your cycle network one. Keep clicking the wrong button. Uh, you've got OS Outdoors. So this is similar to your OS maps. Not quite the same, um, but again, just sort of another way of looking at things. And then your final one is your nature. And again, it's kind of... They're all... Well, they're all maps, really. They're all very similar. <laughs> but... Um, there we go. So you can see the different, how each map has sort of slightly different features uh, that it shows and highlights on the trail. So if we go back, so Rob Roy uh, paid. So we've looked at the trail overview map. We've looked at download offline maps. So let's have a look at this yellow tab, trail stages. So we come to this and basically what they've done is they've broken down the trail into stages, believe it or not. Um, what I would probably like to see is some more information about what each stage uh, or where each stage goes fr like from and to. So at the moment it just says stage one. Um, I suppose it kind of does. It's, it says like, I don't know, is that the count? Well, anyway, let's select one. So stage one. So what they've done is they've said a recommended stage is to go from Drimmon to Aberfoyle. But what I actually did was I went from Drimmon to Aberfoyle and then I went straight up to Calanda. So you obviously need to tailor this stuff based upon um, your experience levels and how far you want to walk so you can see that stage one there is 11 miles stage two is nine miles so I put them together and I had 20 miles which was which was fine for me um, stage two that'll take you to Calanda there you go which is great so that's your different stages and then you've got your alternative routes again coming back to that that's that big spur 30 mile loop that I missed on this occasion which is kind of a shame but I'll be back um, so there's your different stages and then I think that's pretty much everything on this main page, which is great. Again, if you wanted to share it, so you've got your little so got classic your... share buttons. Um, and if you wanted to share it via different um, networks, then you can do that on there, which is fabulous. So coming back to search. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reveal some of the trails that are on my list to do. Um, where do I start? Let's come over this way a minute. So obviously Iceland is an amazing country. This is an Icelandic trail. I'm going to favourite that. What else? Kungsleden is on my list. That's the south part. So where's the north part? I need to find the north part. In fact, let's go on the map. Here we go. Svidan. North part of Kungsleden. Here it is. I'm going to favourite that. 
And now what I want to do is go back to my homepage, favorite. Here we go, they're all here, which is great. Um, wondering if, okay, so what I can't do is order them. So I'm trying to select one and drag it up. So that would be quite good. So when I'm on the Rob Roy way, obviously I want that to be at the top so I can select it super easy. Um, so that would be quite nice to see them move, you know, so you can basically select and drag it up to the top. You can't see my finger right now, but I'm dragging <laughs> uh, right up to the top, which would be really good. And you can just have it for super quick access. So what I tend to do is unfavorite everything and then it's not on there. And I can just really quickly, easily get to the Rob Roy way or the trail that I'm on when I'm on the trail. There we go. Perfect. Uh, advanced search. So if you really want to say you want to go to Iceland, um, and that's it what's well, telling you seven trails oh i wonder how many okay so they have 297 trails documented on here at the moment wow <laughs> so i want to go to iceland um i have no preference on the total distance i have no preference on the total days that i want to complete it i don't care how much elevation i'm going to do i'm going to search that show a list for me and there you go you've got all the different icelandic trails and you can have a look at one if you can pronounce it <laughs> Uh, you can have a look at the pictures and be like, yeah, that looks nice. I would like to do that. And then you can start to plan things via your map. Whereabouts on Iceland is that? Oh, look at that. On the eastern side. Gosh, <laughs> that's a tiny trail compared to Iceland. <laughs> um, so there we go. Anyway, that is pretty much everything on the, the, the app that I am super knowledgeable about using there's so much on here though and as i say they're constantly building it i'm absolutely loving it if i just click on my profile you can just change your measurement unit so if you want imperial or metric i'm kind of weird and do both um, so there we go completed trails that's a feature i need to add my completed trails onto there that'd be really good because then you can say see which ones i've done um, and that is it my friends so there you have it guys. I hope that was useful for you. Obviously it's a little bit bitty. Um, I didn't really necessarily piece it together hugely well, but I think I've run through everything I wanted to show you on this app. Um, as I said, reflecting from what I said at the beginning, this has been game changing for me. I'm not relying on it overly heavily when I'm on the trail, but it is really, really nice just to have that assurance that I'm on the, in the right place uh, at the right time <laughs> on the trail. Also super useful when I'm at back home to be able to look at the the different points to plan my trip there's just so much about this app that that separates it from your classic navigational apps like your os maps and your view ranger what's really great about this as well is of course it works in all of the countries that you're in so long as you've got uh, either mobile data or you've downloaded the maps for offline use now you can only download those maps if you have bought the full app so what i would encourage you to do is to download the free version which anybody can do have a play around when you're at home um, or just wandering around on on a local trail see how you get on with it and then if you do want to down or to buy sorry the full version well obviously i would really recommend that but it's obviously only worth doing if you really need it uh, so there we go that is my rundown of the hiker app please let me know how you get on in the comments below i'd love to hear from you if you want to see any other reviews like this again let me know and hopefully i can get on that pretty soon um, but it's wonderful that we have this time together thank you for sharing it with me I'm going to get moving because I'm really cold right now. I'm actually shaking, but I'm trying to hide that because I'm made of tough stuff. <laughs> uh, but there we go. Anyway, right. So pack up bag, go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video, if not on the trail. It's really great, actually. I've been meeting so many people when I'm out and about walking this year. Um, so please do come say hi if you see me. And hopefully we can have a chat and swap some stories uh, and maybe see how you're getting on with this app. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and stay wild. <laughs>